how to choose the best garbage collector for your use case. Before we do that, let's try to understand some of the garbage collection concepts. We'll talk about trade-offs, the generational GC, and two algorithms called mark and copy and mark and sweep. So let's start with trade-offs. When we talk about garbage collection, we generally have to consider three things. The first thing is the memory. This is the amount of memory that is assigned to the program. This is also called as the heap. The second thing that, that we need to understand is the throughput. Throughput is how much amount of time that a code is run compared to how much amount of time your garbage collection is run. So for example, if the throughput is 99%, that means that 99% of the time your code was running and 1% of the time the garbage collection was running. So of course, ideally you would want as much higher throughput as possible. And the third aspect that we need to understand is the latency. Latency is whenever garbage collection runs, how much amount of time or program stops for the garbage collection to run properly. These are generally measured in milliseconds, but they can go up to a few seconds, depending on the size of the memory and the garbage collection algorithm that you choose. Okay, of course, ideally we would want the latency to be as low as possible or as predictable as possible. The second concept that we need to learn is called generational hypothesis. This hypothesis says that most objects die young. So whenever you use any object or variable, whenever you create an object or variable within a function or within a for loop, and that does not escape the for loop or function, so it is limited only to that scope, then of course as soon as the code comes out of the for loop or comes out of the function, that object is eligible for garbage collection. So this hypothesis says that most of our variables are of this kind, they die young. And that is why uh, many of the garbage collection algorithms split your heap size into what is called a young generation and an old generation. So whenever you first create the objects, they are kept into the young generation. Of course, most of them die young or they are eligible for garbage collection very quickly. That's why you have a lot of garbage collection run only on this young generation. And that collection is called a minor collection. If there are objects like your class level variables, which are also called instance level variables, then they of course remain their tenure or their lifetime remains much longer. And that is why even after a lot of minor collections, when the objects are still not eligible for garbage collection, they are promoted into this old generation. Whenever there are a lot of objects in the old generation, so let's say uh, if the amount of space occupied in the old generation goes beyond the threshold, for example, 60% or 70%, then there is a major collection triggered because now you have to clean up the old generation also. And in this case, generally a different kind of algorithm is run on the older generation. Now the third concept that we need to understand is the mark and copy algorithm. So within the young generation, generally the space is divided as Eden space and two survivor spaces. So all the new objects are allocated to the Eden space. Whenever time comes for a minor collection, only the live objects of this Eden space is copied over to the survivor space. And this involves both things. So it will first mark all the objects which are live, that means which are still being used and not eligible for garbage collection. And in second stage, it will copy over all those live objects in this survivor space, either one or two. Once it copies all the live objects, now this Eden space consists of objects which are you have already copied and the objects which are eligible for garbage collection. And that is why this whole Eden space is wiped out or it is just considered that it is an empty space, there is nothing of relevance there. And the allocation of new objects starts again. And you can take a look at these steps to understand why there are two spaces, survivor space one and two. The second algorithm and the fourth concept that we need to understand is the algorithm called mark, sweep and compact algorithm. This is generally done on the old generation. Here, let's say we have a lot of allocated objects. Some of them are live, some of them are eligible for garbage collection. First, we'll mark only the live objects, right? So we'll mark this object, which is live, which is this object and this object. Second is we will sweep and we'll remove all the objects which are eligible for garbage collection. So we'll remove all the 
spaces here at the top and make it blank generally of course technically speaking we do not remove it we just update a data structure behind the scenes saying that these spaces are now empty and then the third aspect of this is compaction so we'll move all these live objects which are still being used and we'll move them onto the left side and we'll cluster them together the advantage of this compaction is afterwards when you when you want to allocate new objects all you have to do is keep a pointer here right keep a reference that everything on the left is being utilized everything on the right is free and whenever you want to allocate a new object just put that object here and bump the pointer to the end of that object so again everything on the left side is being utilized and everything on the right side is free now that we understand all these four concepts let's take a look at the actual garbage collection algorithms serial collector has the smallest footprint of any of the collectors so the amount of data structures the footprint required for this garbage collector to run is very very minimal this collector uses a single thread for both minor as well as major collections and as we saw in the earlier slide about compactions and bump the pointer technique the serial collector uses that technique to allocate new objects and that is why allocation is much faster this collector is generally best for devices which have very restrained restricted memory or if you your application is being run on a shared cpu so let's imagine we have a cpu of say quad core cpu and we have four application to, applications mm -hmm. running on it if your garbage collector was not single threaded and it was multi threaded then it is possible that at some point in time your garbage collector will start all four threads on four cores of the cpu and utilize that entire cpu for its own garbage collection and that is when the other applications running on the cpu will suffer so if there are multiple applications running on a single cpu and you want to ensure that your garbage collection does not affect other cores or other applications then you can use serial collector the next collector to understand is called a parallel collector we generally only talk about parallel old collector which uses multiple threads for both minor gc as well as major gc this collector does not run concurrently with the application okay even though its name suggests it's parallel it's named parallel because it has multiple threads of the garbage collection itself and all of those threads run parallelly but while the garbage collection is running all the application threads are stopped and that is why if your application is deployed on a multi core multi processor systems then this collector will give you the, the greatest throughput that is in the shortest amount of time it will be able to collect the highest amount of garbage possible of course since it stops the entire application and it could stop it for some time it is best only for batch applications so in the batch application you do not care about the user's response time because there is no user on the front end right it's a batch application it's running behind the scenes so what you want is you want the program to run as efficiently as possible so for batch applications the best collector to use is a parallel collector the third algorithm is called a cms collector cms the full form of cms is concurrent mark and sweep and we already saw mark sweep and compact algorithm earlier and this is the same thing but it says it's concurrent mark mark and sweep that means it runs concurrently with the application to mark all the live objects right so the amount of time that the application has to stop is less so the latency of the application is less but of course during the actual collection it still has stw pauses stw is stop the world pauses that means it stops the application for very small amount of time to do its actual garbage collection but is not as bad as uh, the parallel collector of course there are trade offs so it requires more footprint than parallel collector so it has more data structures that it needs to take care of behind the scenes it has less throughput than the parallel collector but the advantage of this is it has smaller pause times than the parallel collector right and that is why it is best used for general applications the improvement over the cms collector is called g1 collector g1 collector is garbage first collector 
So instead of having a specific young generation and old generation, this collector uses the entire heap and divides it into multiple regions. And it itself assigns uh, whether this region is young generation region or an old generation region. Now compared to the previous collector, CMS, it has more footprint. So it has even more requirement for data structures. But the advantage of this is it this has more predictable latency. And this is the best feature of this collector. So when you start your application, you can pass on this variable that the maximum pause time that my application can withstand is say 10 milliseconds. I cannot handle, my application cannot handle more than 10 milliseconds of pause time. Of course, this is not a very hard target, it's a soft target. So garbage collector, the G1 collector will try to ensure that the garbage collection is done only for 10 milliseconds and even if there is some garbage left then it will take care of it in the next cycle and will allow the application to run after 10 milliseconds and that is why this garbage collector the g1 collector is best for applications which need predictable latency so cms was great for general applications it has lower pause times but if you want predictable pause times predictable latency which you can set using this variable max target pause time then you can use the g1 collector there is one more collector which is coming up which is not yet as a default in jdk is called shenandoah shenandoah is an improvement upon g1 collector wherein it requires a little higher footprint so it takes more data structures behind the scenes but it has even lower latency than g1 it's going to come in a few versions of java so here's the table, complete table to understand the pros and cons. So take a look. In general, I would say the serial collector is for small devices or when you want to ensure that the GC doesn't affect other CPUs. The parallel collector is best for batch applications. Uh, the CMS application, CMS collector is best for general applications. G1 collector is best if you want predictable latency. And in Shenandoah is an improvement upon G1 which you will be able to use it as default in few versions of Java. That's it for this video. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.